Hi, my name's Cathy Millett, and this week I'm going to show you how to cast items for your layout. Now, resin casting is really useful, and I spent a lot of time 3D prototyping this print, and I won't bore you with all the iterations on that, um, because that's a completely different video. But in this video, I'm looking at how I took a 3D print and turned it into a repeatable multiple unit. And this is just a resin cast. Very quick and easy to do. You can print hundreds of them very reasonably and very quickly once you've got your initial design. Now, if you're looking at this and going, why bother? This is a very specialist point that I have here. And um, it, it has a moving blades rather than switch blades the actual track moves it's got a moving frog all very different so why bother well sometimes you just can't buy what you want like this point sometimes you're looking for something quite specific that's either exactly like the real thing in a photo or you just can't buy it you can 3d print those and then print multiple amounts of them by casting why don't you 3d print them all well some of my masters that i've made are on my fdm printer and it prints loads of layers and they have little lines on them. And you can spend quite a bit of time settling those lines to get rid of them. All that settling time has to be repeated every time you do a print. But if you get it right once, you can cast it, and each casting comes out perfectly, which saves you loads of time in the long run if you're doing multiple items. So there we go. That's an explanation of why you might want to 3D print and cast. Let's go and see how you do it. So the first thing I need to do is put the rubber on them to make the mould. So I'm just going to mount them on this bit of card. Um, I don't want a huge amount around the outside. These are quite thin castings. They're going to come out easily. And the rubber's expensive, so I don't want to use too much. To avoid problems like on this mould that I did first, you can see that it came under the glued on point. I sealed it with just a bit of white glue around the edge to avoid that. It's so on to the fun bit, building the mould. Um, the mould itself is obviously rubber, but the mould needs to be contained in something or the rubber will just flood everywhere. And for that, I use Lego. Now, you can use all sorts of things. Um, the easiest thing is quite often to just put some foam core or something and hot glue it. But I find the edges get a bit messy and um, these are quite small and I like to play with Lego. So I'm just going to start building walls. And the key thing is to remember to stagger them and they're both the same size. I think so. That one goes there and the other edge is... Here. Okay, so I've got my two pieces of turnout here. Now I just need to get my Lego, put them into here, and they should just fit and nice and flat. So now I need to mix my rubber. It's a smooth on application. This is Tin Cure silicon rubber and it's Umu 30. 30 is quite hard so it keeps these edges well it doesn't um, get torn and there's a few little sort of quite sharp bits and you can choose the sort of um, hardness of your rubber according to how knobbly it is and loads of undercuts will tear softer moulds. Um, I've just bought this my last lot have gone quite solid and it had been open two months so this is brand new pots and you need to stir them really well. I've discovered the hard way that if you don't stir, it doesn't work. So what I need to do is make sure that these are stirred um, separately really well. I can feel it's a lot thinner at the top than it is at the bottom. You can see it's really gloopy. That needs to go. Now these are really easy to mix. You need equal volumes. So just two measuring cups and pour them to the same line. I'm sure you could scientifically measure the moulds to make sure that you have the right amount of rubber. I didn't. I just put a blob in of pink and a blob of blue. Um, you can go back and um, remix more. It will stick to itself incredibly well. So you can do it by layers and it's not a problem. time on this is 30 minutes um, it doesn't need a really you can take your time stirring it but you can't sit there forever waiting and stirring it and stirring it and stirring it and then we now need to pour this and you can see there's bubbles in it it's going to cause this problems so the way you can get rid of them 
is to pour from as high a distance as you can. That's why I miss my moulds quite a bit. And just pour it really finely whoops, in the edge and just let it flow and fill. And the finer you can get it, the more likely the bubbles are to come out because the um, actual amount that you're pouring is thinner than the bubble size. So pour it in one corner. I can see there are bubbles in there, but this really fine pour will help. Right, one last tap just to settle that last one flat, really get rid of any bubbles. Every time I do it, I can see a bubble rise to the surface. So I think, ah, oh, there's one more bubble. So while I'm still seeing bubbles rising, I'm going to carry on doing this, but I don't want it to unpop my Lego. So just keep pushing your Lego down regularly. Now, if you were doing this professionally, you'd have a proper degassing chamber and all sorts. Um, I'm not doing it professionally and I haven't paid that price, but this also um, levels it out so that the back's a little bit more level. So my mole's been stopped for a couple of days and I can just take the Lego off. So they look much better. These are the ones that I've just done. And these were the ones I did previously. And you can see that the um, amount of bleed into these areas is much less. Now we're on to casting. Now I, there's two methods you can use to get the back flat. And I've tried both. Um, the first method is to take a piece and put acetate over it so that when your mold's filled up, you put the acetate on and you smooth it over. So here's a quick example of me trying out the acetate. And you fill up your mold, you smush the excess resin out the way, just driving it out with your fingers, and you get a nice flat back with maybe a thin skin of resin left on between the mold and the acetate. So it does give a nice flat back. There's a lot of bubbles, an awful lot of bubbles. And I've, I've tried the acetate a few times. This is one of my last ones I did, did a couple of four tests. So I can't get those bubbles out by the way I push the acetate on. And if people can do that, that's great. The other way that I've been far happier with is the way I'm gonna show you now. And I think it comes out just as well, but the bottom is certainly very um, flat still. So now we're on to casting, I'm going to just show you quickly how to cast parts. We've got our two moulds that we made. Um, first thing I do is put down a couple of layers of kitchen roll to cover my, put it flat, to cover my work surface. And I'm going to squish resin onto this in a minute. Gloves. I forgot to put them on for the rubber bit. I'm really naughty. Do not forget your gloves. These are nasty. They say they're carcinogenic on the side and I believe them. They don't smell particularly, but I would still do this in a well ventilated room with the doors open and make sure that you are aware this is noxious stuff and you shouldn't be touching it with your bare hands. When you've finished, wash your hands with soap and water, even if you don't think there's any resin on them at all, because you know, I'm going to McDonald's after this. I don't want to eat this resin. It wouldn't be good for me. The other thing I've got on the side is a couple of spare moulds of things that I also want to mould up in case there's any spare resin. Because resin's expensive, it goes off quickly, you want to cast as much as possible, but you don't want to overcast. So I always make sure I've got some spare moulds to use up the excess. I use coffee stirrers for these. You need one for each colour, um, so each one has its own separate stirrer. You do not want to mix the two. And you also need um, just want to combine them. You need two cups. Now, the fluted side ones aren't the best, as I said, with the rubber, but actually they're really easy for measuring. So I'm gonna use those two cups and I'm just gonna fill them now, equal parts, I don't need that much. These are quite small castings with um, A and B. But before I do that, while I remember, baby powder. This helps get the resin into your corners of your mold. Um, so you can just fluffle it around Tip it back and forth. This is one reason why it's really good to do this on a, um, a surface like this, because otherwise you end up with quite a lot on your mat. There we go. And just knock it out and blow. <laughs> Perfect. And it just helps break the surface tension. Which I, and as always, every resin is different. So do look and make sure you do the right amount. And try not to knock them over. I knocked one of these on the floor yesterday. That was fun. Thankfully it was before it had been mixed. 
So this resin is another smooth on product. It's smooth cast 300. It sets in about 10 minutes. So you don't have a lot of time for stirring, but it is a really easy resin to use. I've got a fresh stirring stick. I like to pour A into B because A is slightly thinner so more of it comes out the pot. Otherwise I sometimes feel the B leaves a bit more in the pot. There we go. So you want to mix this till you get rid of all of the glycerine look. It doesn't take long to mix and you can tell when it's mixed because those sort of trails that you see in it, the mixing trails disappear. Okay. Make sure you get the edges. Don't spend forever mixing. Um, this is one of those occasions where you don't really have the time. And now you need to pour it in. Try not to pour too much. You ain't gonna have to squish it out in a minute. On the other hand, you need enough to cover it. always come back and pour more in a sec. Heavy handed. There we go. Right, so now what you want to do is get it smooth. So you just smush it back and forth and you hold this flat on your mould and you just smush it down. And what you're looking to do is you just need to make sure that it's as smooth as it possibly can be. So you're not leaving too much excess there. It does leave it with a slightly beveled underneath, um, but that's fine. You can, um, well, you can cope with that. And if you feel that there isn't enough, you can smush it back up and just put a bit more in. But what you notice is I'm knocking all the bubbles off. So this is why I like this technique. It does get rid of all your bubbles. There we go. And fill up this other one before it sets. So you can see on here already, this, is, this one here which had more in it, is starting to change colour. It's going white. And that means um, you know, they, they go like this colour when they're finished. So you know when they're done because they've gone solid white. Leave it the extra five, 10 minutes, come back, you can do another one. It makes it much quicker than 3D printing, which takes an hour and a half, two hours to do each print. This will be done in 10 minutes. Okay, so I can tell from my cup, this is now nice and solid, so I always keep the cups to make sure everything's set. And all I need to do now is peel these out. What I like to do though first is just unhook my moulds from this um, kitchen roll I was using turn them upside down and just hold this bottom flat and then I can just peel up my mould keeping this flat it distorts it a little bit less I'm doing it this way I feel because you're keeping it flat so that's how you take a 3d design where you want to print multiple copies and cast it so Sometimes it's appropriate for you to do that. The 3D print, you can cast in a stronger resin than the 3D print will allow you to print in and you don't have the ability to do ABS. Or you just want to do something that you're going to do 100 times and it's quicker to do these. I hope you found that interesting. If you've got any comments or questions, please put them down below. Bear in mind, all of the materials I've used and all of the tools are listed below. So you can go and check them out. They're in the description. And also, you know, thank you to my patrons for supporting me. I really appreciate it. And guys, it's been fun. I'll see you again soon.